Hey Laserheads, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, this channel is dedicated to showcasing and the education of what lasers can do. Uh, so if you could please take a second uh, real quick and hit like and subscribe or share our content. It really helps us out and uh, with the algorithm, it doesn't cost you anything. We all know how that algorithm is. So I wanted to take a little, uh, little bit of time and talk about our CO2 laser and one of the things that makes ours uh, much better than others on the market. And one of those points of differentiation is our beam combiner. So what is a beam combiner? How does it work? And why is it important in my laser? Uh, by the end of this video, we will break down so you know exactly what you should be looking for in a beam combiner. Now, most gantry style lasers use a laser pointer for part placement. And you need this for aligning your engraving up to the materials to be lasered on. Now, some companies will actually stick a really small, like a red dot laser pointer on the side of the laser head, and it has two really small adjustment or lockdown screws. Now, these are not that great. They can easily be knocked loose or jarred from the movement. Even the laser head moving uh, back and forth can cause them to be misaligned. The other option is the use of a beam combiner. Now, what it does is send the visible red laser beam down the same path as a CO2 beam. And how is this achieved? Uh, the way it works is the laser tube produces a 10,600 nanometer beam. As it exits the tube, it's sent to mirror one, which is located inside of the beam combiner. Now the first mirror is an opaque surface with a special coating on it, and then the beam is 100% reflected at 45 degrees, and it's sent down its path towards mirror two. Now on the same path, a partially reflective lens is placed in, its, in front of it, and this lens has another special coating that allows the laser beam, the 10,600 wavelength, to pass through it, but it reflects a smaller wavelength like the 700 nanometer red dot pointer, and that lens is placed at a 45 degree uh, angle in an opposite direction as the CO2 laser, but it allows both of them to combine and head down toward mirror two. Now the quality of these beam combiners can vary greatly. Uh, some manufacturers will simply use a small L bracket to prop up the mirror or the lens. Uh, some will even include some adjustment for the mirror and lens. But what truly matters um, for that is the mounting and the sturdiness of the housing. This should be a very solid fixed mount that can handle the jarring of the whole machine. Uh, mirror alignment and red dot alignment are one of the things that people struggle with the most. I see it all the times in the forums. Uh, some of those issues arise from having a cheaply made beam combiner or a red dot pointer mount. You could spend literally hours aligning your mirrors and dialing it in just how you want it for your red dot pointer and get it exactly where you want it. It's dialed in and only to have it be thrown off a few engravings later. A cheaply made red dot pointer or beam combiner can have you super frustrated very quickly. The force that's created as a laser head moves at high speed is enough to knock red dots loose from their mounts or cheap beam combiners out of alignment. I mean, that's just the truth of it. This is why we chose a housing of aluminum for our beam combiner. We also included some adjustment on both the mirror and the red pointer. Uh, our beam combiner is mounted on its own bracket. Uh, we looked at the deficiencies of what was already out there in other lasers, and we addressed those issues during the design process. Solid, stable, and locking adjustment on the reflective mirror, uh, stable and locking adjustment on the red dot pointer mount, uh, the highest quality 2.6 lenses and mirrors, and then a really beefy housing that can withstand the G-forces that our high-speed laser head can produce. Uh, we're talking about 5 Gs. All these combined is what you should be looking for in a beam combiner, especially if you don't want to spend a lot of excessive time aligning things. It's always better to set it and forget it. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't do regular checks or, or maintenance on your machine, but having those solid components keeps you engraving and less time aligning. I mean, that's what you're really hoping for. So I hope you guys learned a lot about what to look for in a beam combiner or a red dot pointer mount. Uh, ask those questions when you're looking at different lasers. And as always, if you have questions about the beam combiner or any other laser topics, give us a call at 1-888-964-3568. We love lasers. We love talking about them uh, and educating people about them. Uh, you can also visit our website at www.sailasers.com. There's a lot of good info and examples of what lasers can do. So until next time, laserheads.